Hi friends. This video is going to be a little out of sequence if you watched my last video, but I was contractually obligated to get that video about the AFRI power uh, supply out as soon as I touched the ground in Arizona. Everybody's flying their Mexican flag for Independence Day, and we're getting out of town just before the loud fireworks start. Well, the mountains won't be green when we come back. Are you coming, Lynn? Chapala. Killing time in the gift shop. Chica. Medio. Y grande. Muy grande. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary to you, sweetheart. some pollution in Phoenix today. You awake? <laughs> yeah. It really was our 50th anniversary, but our daughter Becky is about to remind us of a family story from 40 years ago. I'm not Dave. Mom, mom, mom. Do you remember? Do you remember this? We got help from here. So, what's the story with Lynn and Dave? Forty years ago, it was okay to go to Kmart and drop your kids off in the toy aisle while you shopped. Certainly those days are gone, but this was 40, 45 years ago. Uh, we did that, but we had explained to our kids that if they ever needed help or something, that they could go up to the front of the store and tell an employee that uh, they needed help. And um, our daughter, Becky, decided to try that out. So we dropped her off in the toy aisle and five minutes later there was this announcement over the PA system. We have a little girl named Becky up here and her mom's name is Lynn and her dad's name is Jerry. 
So we go up to the front of the store and get her, and we have these conversations with her about crying wolf. You don't do that unless you absolutely need to help. So hopefully the point was made. A few weeks later, same thing happened again. Only this time, the announcement was, we have a little lost girl up her, here. Her name is Becky, and her mom's name is Lynn, and her dad's name is Dave. She didn't want me to know. <laughs> she lied about who I was <laughs> because she knew she'd be in trouble. So did I run up to the front of the store and see what was the problem with my daughter, Becky? Nope. I ran across the store and found Lynn and said, who's Dave? <laughs> so Lynn, I know you always used to have glasses that were colored the same as your clothes. Yes. Did you realize today your purple frame? Glasses. You have purple frame glasses, but did you realize you're matching our luggage today? I am. Purple and purple. Oh, wow. Everybody seemed to enjoy the last video I did in Mexico um, because uh, Lynn was in it so much. <laughs> I got twice as many views as I usually do. So a lesson to Jerry. Uh, if you need more views, just get Lynn in the video. And speaking of... Hi, Lynn. Hi. Everybody seems to like you a lot. You know, we were talking about I'm your first uh, uh, biggest fan, and then a guy named Mike was your second biggest fan. And you are my sunshine. Yeah, all of that. But now we have somebody who have I have agreed to let them officially be your third largest fan. Oh. I don't know their actual name, but their YouTube uh, name is something like Ribbit. 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 There's a V in there, but I'm pronouncing it like the Mexican Bay Chica, the V. Yeah. Ribbit. Because <laughs> it sounds like frogs, and you, we all know you like frogs, right? You do. <laughs> no, 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 no. I already told that story when I was putting that big green frog on top of the pillar in out there in the island in our front yeah. yard in Mexico yes. about you telling everybody in the family that I collected frogs when I didn't. <laughs> and so I wound up over the years, every birthday, every Christmas, every occasion to get a present, I got frogs yeah. and wound up with the largest herd of frogs in Oregon. And you brought some of them along to Mexico. No, no, well, One, maybe two. Mm -hmm. The one green one, which is Plaster of Paris, I painted when I was seven years old. It's on the bottom, 1953. Yeah, that's, okay. that's where the story started. Anyway, uh, we're repeating ourselves. What do you got in the box? Espresso. Starbucks. Italian roast? Yes. How many you got in there? Uh, 96. Yeah. 96 packets. Yeah. Sometimes you're expensive. Sometimes I am. Sometimes <laughs> I'm not. Most of the, all of the time, though, you're worth it. What happened to your head? My head? Yeah. You got I was sleepwalking the other night, and I didn't know where I was, and I ran into the table. When you fell and down? And fell down. Well, um, you already told me this. I think it bears repeating for the rest of our friends. What were you dreaming? <laughs> <laughs> I was dreaming that my mother was in my bed and taking up too much room and I decided to get out of bed and go around and sleep on the other side of her. So you were sleepwalking 
right over there by the table is where you hit your head on the way down to that floor. That's right. But it was a dream. Your mother has been dead in... for many years. We don't say dead on YouTube. We say transcended or went to heaven or okay okay your mother has transcended <laughs> okay uh we lived in oregon for a long time and the bhagwan rajneeshi i remember he didn't him. die he transcended <laughs> yeah anyway okay thanks for stopping there's your lynn uh, this is just going to be more of me cleaning out my memory cards. Uh, I, I got to make room for new videos in my phone and my camera, uh, memory card. So enjoy flashbacks of my life in Mexico and elsewhere. <laughs> Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. I want you to notice something. It's quiet. That's a Honda Foreman 450, and I bought it for Lynn many years ago. I think it's a 2003 or 4 model. Anyway, I bought it for her so she could have a little independence and drive around Ahihik on her own, rather than me having to take her to the beauty shop or to the dentist or whatever. Lynn hasn't driven a car for like 25 years, but when we moved to Mexico, uh, I bought that for her. Well, she was quite a sight with her long blonde hair when it was down to her waist blowing in the wind behind her. And that worked really, really well for a whole bunch of years. And then finally one day she came home and she said she had a little fender bender. It was a one mile an hour side swipe and I had to pay 700 pesos to a lady to get the black tire marks uh, polished off the side of her car. And not too long after that, she came home and said she'd had another minor incident. And the guy got out of the car and said, basically, nah, you're too cute for us to worry about this and drove off. And then the next incident, uh, she came home and she told me that she rear-ended the city bus. And uh, the bus driver got out and looked, and it didn't do anything to the beat-up old bus, and it didn't do anything to the ATV. In Mexico, we call them cuatromotos. Didn't do anything to a cuatromoto, so he got back in the bus and drove a block to the next stop, at which time she rear-ended him the second time. <laughs> and he looked, she says, he looked in the mirror and went... <laughs> Anyway, she came home, told me that story, parked it, and she hasn't driven it since. And that's been about five years. I drive it down to the lake, and I take it to the grocery store once in a while just to keep it running. Eating pie and ice cream at home in Ahihik on the couch. This bush with the red flowers is an amazing story of things growing in Mexico currently being attacked by monarch butterflies, by the way. Oh, there's a good picture of one. Oh, flew away. Come on. There's two of them chasing each other. Sorry if I'm making you ill chasing butterflies. This wall was a bare wall when we moved in and we planted bougainvillea. We had to do that a couple of times because not all of the bougainvillea lived the first time around. And one of them that died, uh, we had to prop them up with stakes. 
and we just used sticks that we found around. This tree was a dead stick that we used to prop up the bougainvillea. The bougainvillea died <laughs> and the stick sprouted 20 years ago. The monarchs, lots of them. Sorry, they're not uh, here to get their picture taken. Oh, there's one there that landed. Oh, dang. I'll get one when he lands. Come on. Hmm, maybe later. Sorry if you two wanted to be private. This is a ring-tailed cat, really rare to see one. Indigenous to uh, Jalisco, Mexico. And I have seen one in Arizona also. Uh, this is my security camera at my home in Ajijic, Mexico. This is slow motion now so that you can get a good look at it. I play this next clip for Lynn every morning to get her into a good mood. Does that look about the bird or me? I made this into a YouTube short, but YouTube canceled the upload in the middle of it. <laughs> chili relleno casserole. It was too much trouble to make chili relleno, so I just put it all into a casserole. Stuffed peppers. I like the red one. She likes the yellow one. And then we have a fight about who's going to have to eat the green one. The house we raised our kids in in Portland, Oregon, 7,000 square feet. And my mother would come and tell three-year-old Becky, don't run in the house on the hardwood floors. It makes too much noise. And I'd say, Mom, if she doesn't run, she ain't going to get there today. A couple of bad hombres in Tombstone, Arizona. Both with the same last name as me. Some of my favorite Asian food, Korean food at my daughter's house in Hillsboro, Oregon. Lights on my tricycle in Quartzsite, Arizona, inspired by the taxi from Burning Man. My second favorite dog, Holly, loves to ride on the back of my tricycle. Holly's some kind of an Australian sheep herding dog or something like that. I don't know that much about dogs, but if you're not going where Holly wants when you go for a walk. One time she bit a hole right in the back of my jeans because I didn't go where she thought I ought to. My Suzuki sidekick, I sold it when I got my Jeep. I should have kept it. I missed that car. My 1972 Honda trail bike, I sold that too because I laid it down in the desert and hurt my leg. That's when I sold it and bought my tricycle because I decided I'm too old for two wheels. I need three. Organ pipe cactus. That's organ, like the one you play, not Oregon, like the one where you live. And I don't actually say Oregon because I lived in Oregon for many years. Oregon. It's on my license plate there. The big, beautiful border wall. I heard Mexico is going to pay for it. I'm not sure if that ever happened or not. A uh, hummingbird in the motorhome. Hey, fella. Just relax. I'll open the screen for you. Just be nice. Be cool. 
Here we go. Don't get excited. Don't go anywhere else. Bye bye. Come again when you can stay longer. How'd you like that? I loved it. Somewhere along the road on the way to somewhere else in the western United States of America. Home for a while. The Arizona Ranch. Solar. The Barn. Santa Rita Mountains. Madera Canyon. Well, I hope this hasn't been like your relatives coming home from vacation and making you watch all of their vacation pictures. <laughs> We're getting the RV ready to travel. Uh, I have an appointment uh, to get my brakes done on the RV. That's going to be a big job. Um, a couple of other small things. Kitchen faucet was leaking underneath, so uh, I ordered a new one and got it installed. Really like this one. This comes out and you can spray around and actually I wash Lynn's hair here in the sink. I've got a new rear view camera coming that I'll be talking about soon. Um, and then we're going to hit the road. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.